What is going on everyone? Today we are finally going to be taking a look at the 8GB RX 580 with a full round of benchmarks up against the GTX 1060 as well as going over the power color Red Devil RX 580 that was supplied for this review video. PowerColor are well known for doing some of the more aggressively designed cards for the AMD family of GPUs in terms of their looks as well as the out of the box clock speeds. This model here retails for $299 when it is available, however if you've been paying attention lately or saw my video on the current state of the GPU market then you know these cards are few and far between at the moment because of those pesky cryptocurrency miners. This has caused the value of the RX cards to skyrocket leading to third party sellers overcharging and current owners flocking to eBay to make a healthy profit from selling their cards. Despite that though, this card does still retail at $299 and we should expect it to eventually return to that pricing as Ethereum mining levels off so that's why I'm testing it against the Nvidia counterpart, the GTX 1060 that can be had between $250 to $300 for the 6GB models like I'm using for today's testing. The Red Devil RX 580 uses a dual fan heatsink design to keep the temperatures down on the 150 watt TDP card. I did have a custom fan curve set in MSI Afterburner and after running Heaven Benchmark for close to two hours, my temperatures settled at 66 degrees Celsius, although during some other game testing I did see it get as high as 68 degrees Celsius, but nothing that should impact performance negatively in terms of our clock speeds. For the core clock, it comes out of the box at 1380 MHz and a memory clock of 8 GHz, but for all of my testing, I did have it overclocked to the highest stable OC that I could get, which was 1440 MHz on the core and 2250 MHz on the memory, giving us an effective speed of 9 GHz with the power increased by 50% on the RX 580. While the GTX 1060 Founders card here, I also had that overclocked to the highest I could get it, which is an additional 200 MHz on the core and 300 MHz on the memory. For the system here, I was using my frame rater build that has the i7 7700K overclocked to 5 GHz that should help eliminate any CPU bottleneck in our game testing and I have that paired up with 16 GB of G-Scale Trident Z RAM at 3200 MHz and lastly I was on the latest drivers for AMD and Nvidia which are 17.6.2 and 382.53 respectively. Without further ado though, let's delve into the benchmarks where we will start off with the average FPS at 1080p on high settings. I can honestly say that I was surprised with just how close the numbers were. I thought with the refresh of the 580 we would see the RX cards take a lead in most games when compared to the 1060, but that was not always the case. The Red Devil RX 580 took significant wins in Dirt 4, Overwatch, and Rainbow Six Siege while falling behind to the 1060 a fair bit in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, Prey, and Metro Last Light. In the other games tested, I saw a difference of only 1 to 3 FPS, which is kind of within the margin of error. So in games like The Division, Sniper Elite 4, Wildlands, and Battlefield 1, we are seeing a virtual tie between these two cards. That doesn't change at all really in the 1% lows either where we saw pretty much the same thing. One thing is for sure though, both of these cards can handle 1080p extremely well on high settings. Not a single game here had an average below 60 FPS and The Division was the only title with 1% lows down in the 50s for both cards. Continuing on to 1440p now and keeping everything at the same exact high settings as before, we can see both cards doing very well at the higher resolution. Ghost Recon Wildlands was the only game with an average below 60 and many other games like Overwatch, Dirt 4, and Rising Storm 2 Vietnam all had performance to spare and could very likely run up near Ultra even at 1440p. The 1% lows did come down a little lower than I would like to see at 1440p but I still found all of these games very playable on the RX 580 card as well as the GTX 1060. This is something we've been going over pretty much since the launch of the RX 480 so the data shouldn't really surprise too many of you out there. 
Both of these cards are, without a doubt, excellent purchases right now at under $300, but it's hard to call a clear-cut winner. Um, we may see the drivers on the 580 age better in the coming months, and if they do, this may warrant something that I want to revisit for further testing. Either way, though, I have no issue suggesting either one of these cards if for you guys today, but if it were me, I would personally lean towards the 580 for a few reasons. One of them being the extra VRAM, having an 8GB buffer is very nice, and I've also had a better experience over the past year or so with AMD drivers. And the last reason being is that you can get very affordable FreeSync monitors under $400 that do 1440p, while with the NVIDIA cards it wouldn't make a lot of sense to spend five to $800 on a G-Sync monitor just to pair that up with a sub $300 card. So to me that really says that the 580s are a better mainstream card when you do consider those other factors. But always please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be sure to link over to Amazon where you can pick up the Red Devil RX 480. Just make sure that you're not paying above its retail value of around $299 because of the current cryptocurrency mining boom. Also, be sure to leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're not already or if you are a longtime viewer, hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my graphics card reviews and other tech news videos. And I will catch up with you guys next time. Ta-ra.